Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Photo Nation video. Hey, today we're gonna to talk about how to master your camera and how to be the boss of your camera. Let's get it. You are entering Photo Nation. Hey, are your images coming out too light or too dark? If they're coming out too light, that means they're overexposed and too much light is entering the lens. If they're coming out too dark, that means they're underexposed and not enough light is entering the lens. Hey, this usually happens when your camera is set to P for program mode, which is an automatic setting. And the P is not for professional. So in order to take control of your camera, you must first understand the exposure triangle. Setting your camera to the manual mode can help you take control of your camera and be the boss of your camera. But first, you have to understand the exposure trio. Yes, I said trio. I prefer to call them trio because they all work together to give you a proper exposure. The exposure trio is based on three things. Your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. They all work together to give you a proper exposure. Notice I didn't say perfect exposure. Let's take a look at how they work. Think of the exposure trio as being on a three-way seesaw. So when one let in more light, you have to let in less light on the other. And they all have to balance each other out to get a proper exposure. Okay, with that said, I have a question for you. Do you think there's any such thing as a perfect exposure? See, photography is subjective. What you think is a perfect exposure, another person may not. As an artist and photographer, you have to decide what a perfect exposure is. But first, to get you there, you have to understand the exposure trio. ISOs, apertures, and shutter speeds all control the amount of light that passes through the lens. So let's start with the first one of the trios, which are ISOs. So back in the day before it was digital, you would have to go in the camera store to buy a roll of film, and it would only have one ISO on it. So you would have to photograph the entire event on one ISO. But today, digital cameras are a game changer because now you have a variety of ISOs to choose from. So ISOs can range from 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and so on, depending on the camera manufacturers. Some offer more, some offer less. So this is how they work. The lower the ISO number, the less sensitive it is to light. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive it is to light. Lower ISOs let in the least amount of light, higher ISOs let in more light. So if you were photographing outside in the bright sun, you want to use a less sensitive ISO like 50, 100, or 200 because it let in the least amount of light. But on the other hand, if you were photographing in a low lit situation like maybe inside of a church or a gymnasium, you want a higher ISO more sensitive that will let in more light. But remember when you're shooting with a high ISO like 800, 1600, or 3200, yes, it let in more light, but it also can introduce digital noise or grain into your images. ISOs are also responsible for image quality. So that's why it's better to shoot with a smaller ISO, less sensitive, small number like 100, 200 for maximum sharpness and clarity. Noise and grain is not to always be avoided because if you're photographing in a low light situation and you have to use a high number like 800, 1600 or 3200, it's better to have a somewhat grainy picture than not have a picture at all. You make the call. Okay, moving on to the second member of the trio, the aperture, also known as the f-stop. The aperture of the f-stop can come in a wide range of numbers from 1.4, 2.8, f4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, so on and so on. Uh, depending on the lens, it could be higher or lower. So the smaller the F number, like 1.4 or 2.8, is a larger opening and lets in more light. And on the other end of the scale, the larger F numbers is a small opening and lets in the least amount of light. So the most confusing part for any photographer are the photographic terms. So just think of the aperture as an opening on the lens and the f-stop is the number of the lens. See, a large aperture is a smaller f number like 1.4 or 2.8. Large opening lets in more light. And a small aperture, large number like 11, 16, or 22 has a smaller opening, but it let in the least amount of light. Yes, it sounds backwards, but f-stops are fractions like 
F1.4 is really 1.41425. But who want to talk about fractions? I <laughs> mean, but don't worry. Most cameras can be set to one third stops, one half stops, or whole stops. And I like to think of it as whole stops, 2.848, it's easier to remember. So what are the jobs of the f-stops? F-stops control the amount of light that passes through the lens based on the f-stop that you select. So for example, 2.8 is a smaller f number, but it lets in the maximum amount of light. On the other hand, f-16 is a larger f number, but it lets in the least amount of light. F-stops also control what's called depth of field. It usually controls the sharpness one-third in front of your subject to two-thirds behind your subject where you can see the effect. So the smaller the opening, the larger the F number will give you the maximum amount of sharpness from your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. But if shallow depth of field is what you're looking for, you have to use a larger opening, smaller F number to make your background go out of focus to make your subject stand out. All right, so let's move on to the last member of the exposure trio, which are shutter speeds. Shutter speeds also come in a wide variety of numbers. On the higher end, faster shutter speeds are like 1 1,000, 1 500, 1 2 50th of a second. And on the other end, slower shutter speeds can range from 1 30th of a second, 1 50th of a second, 1 half a second, 1 second, 2 second, and beyond, all the way to bulb. Just like f-stops, shutter speeds also control the amount of light that passes through the lens. The smaller numbers lets in more light, the larger number lets in the least amount of light. So one second is a slow shutter. It remains open for one second and then it closes, allowing a lot of light to pass through the lens. On the other hand, a fast shutter speed like 1 500, 1000, it opens and closes so fast, it doesn't allow a lot of light to pass through. Shutter speeds are also responsible for either stopping action or showing motion. Faster shutter speeds like 1 500 of a second, 1 1000 of a second will stop action, but slower shutter speeds from a 30th down like 1 second, 2 second, or 3 second will actually show motion. And if you go all the way to the end of the slower shutter speeds, there's a letter B for bold. Uh, it works if you hold a shutter all the way down and as long as you're holding the shutter, it's letting light in. And that's good for fireworks, lightning shots, or even air art. But one thing to remember, if you use the shutter speed slower than the 60th of a second, it must be on a tripod or else you'll get camera shake and your picture will come out blurry. The focal length of your lens is, let's say 100 millimeter, your shutter speed should be faster at least 1 1 25th of a second. All right, so let's recap. We're gonna start with ISO. Remember I said that ISO controls the amount of light based on how sensitive it is to film. So if you're photographing in a bright sun, you will use a less sensitive ISO like 100 or 200 that lets in the least amount of light. On the other hand, if you're photographing in a church or a low light situation, you will use a more sensitive ISO like 800, 1600, or 3200 that will let in more light. Just remember to watch out for grain. All right, let's move on to apertures, better known as f-stops. The f-stops control the amount of light that passes through the lens based on the f-stop you select. A smaller F number will give you the maximum amount of light, where a larger F number will give you the least amount of light. A smaller number will give you more shallow depth of field or a blurry background. A larger number like 16 or 22 will give you a sharp depth of field from the foreground, middle ground, and background. So lastly, let's move on to shutter speeds. Faster shutter speeds let in the least amount of light, but it also stops action. Slower shutter speeds let in the most amount of light, but it also shows motion. And make sure if you're shooting with shutter speeds below a 60th of a second, you're on a tripod. Wow, I know that was a lot, and I hope you took notes. But don't worry, just study them one at a time, practice them one at a time, and as time passes, it'll become easy. So hopefully you found this information of the exposure trio helpful to you. Alrighty guys, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hey, I hope you found this content helpful. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure in the comments you put, I subscribe, your name and the city you're viewing from. And I'm giving away a few signed copies of my book, Exposure Made Easy. And I'll pick a few new subscribers from the comments. See more details in the description. And also in the description, make sure you get our free photography cheat sheet. Go get it. Download it, use it, and I'll see you in the next video.